Hello, my name is Srinivas Bishu, and I'm an IBD physician at the University of Michigan Hospital. Welcome to the IBD School 200 series. In this video, IBD School 209 Part 1, we will talk about the causes of symptoms in IBD other than inflammation. Specifically, I want to talk about strictures, bacterial overgrowth, and bile acid diarrhea. First, let's talk about strictures. Strictures are blockages of the GI tract. Strictures occur when there's active inflammation and then healing. The healing leaves a scar which can block the GI tract. Since strictures are blockages, they most commonly present with abdominal pain, nausea, and vomiting. Strictures usually require surgery to treat. Generally, the treatment plan is to surgically remove them and then use medications to prevent them from forming again. The medications prevent them from forming by keeping inflammation in check. Next, we will discuss bacterial overgrowth. The GI tract is full of bacteria. In fact, there are more bacteria in the GI tract than cells in your body. One way the GI tract controls bacteria is called peristalsis. This fancy word, peristalsis, means that the muscles in your GI tract squeeze in a coordinated way to propel things from your mouth to your bottom. This peristalsis is how food moves through your GI tract. Peristalsis also keeps the bacteria in your intestines where they are supposed to be and prevents too many of them from growing in one location. Patients with Crohn's disease who either have inflammation or strictures can have decreased peristalsis. This can cause bacteria to overgrow in the small intestine. The extra bacteria then ferment food in the intestine or interfere with the normal absorption of the intestine. This condition is called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, or SIBO for short. SIBO usually manifests as diarrhea, bloating, and abdominal pain. These symptoms are similar to Crohn's disease, but in contrast to active Crohn's disease, SIBO is not associated with inflammation. SIBO is easily treated with antibiotics. Sometimes SIBO recurs. In these cases, we can give repeated courses of antibiotics, and it usually responds well. Lastly, let's talk about bile acid diarrhea. Bile acids are produced by the liver and are kept in the gallbladder. The gallbladder then squirts bile into your intestine at the right time after you eat food. Bile is necessary for digesting fats, lipids, and fat-soluble vitamins such as vitamin D. The bile acids are normally reabsorbed into your body in the last or terminal portion of the small intestine. This region of the intestine is called the terminal ileum. Any inflammation of the terminal ileum or surgery of the terminal ileum can cause disruptions in the reabsorption of bile. In these cases, bile then passes into the colon. However, the colon cannot reabsorb bile, so it causes diarrhea and sometimes bloating. Many patients with Crohn's disease either have inflammation of the ileum or have had a surgery to remove the terminal ileum. These patients are especially prone to have bile acid diarrhea. Some patients with ulcerative colitis can also have bile acid diarrhea if they have severe disease that affects the ileum called backwash ileitis. Bile acid diarrhea is easily treated with medications that bind to the bile acids and allow them to pass through the colon without irritating it. Generally speaking, all of the symptoms we spoke about could also be due to IBD. One important difference between these and IBD is that these symptoms are not due to inflammation. As discussed more extensively in part two of this series, we use blood and stool tests, imaging studies, and colonoscopy to tell the difference. Please watch part two of this video to discuss other causes of symptoms in IBD that I have not discussed here. I'm Srinivas Bishu, and thank you for watching IBD School videos.